Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Simon and I make snowboard and walking content. If that sounds like it interests you, then just hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with my latest videos. In this video, I'm going to look at my Magic Pass experience and reflect on some of the best resorts available on the pass. I want to say a huge thanks to those of you who have been following my Magic Pass journey. It is definitely an experience I've enjoyed and I would really like to use the Magic Pass again in the future. What's more rewarding is that I've heard from a number of you who are heading out to Switzerland with the Magic Pass this winter. I hope that my videos have provided inspiration alongside some information, but if you're looking for any more details, make sure you head to my website where you'll find guides for the ski resorts that I visit. Before I get into this video, I'd also like to send a huge thanks to those of you who have supported the channel via the buy me a coffee link in the description. And hopefully it means I'm doing something right. Okay, so let's get into my Magic Pass reflections, starting with some information about the Magic Pass. The Magic Pass is potentially the best value lift pass in the world. Similar to the Epic and Icon passes that are dominating America, the Magic Pass combines multiple resorts for unlimited skiing or snowboarding. The majority of the ski resorts included are in Switzerland, with one resort across the border in France. Buying the Magic Pass on the early bird option costs 399 Swiss francs. This is normally available from May, and that's 52 resorts, unlimited access for the equivalent of 355 pounds. There are many resorts across Europe that would cost similar to that for a six day lift pass. The Magic Pass is valid in both winter and summer, meaning not only does that £355 include your winter skiing, but you can also use the Magic Pass during the summer for hiking and mountain biking. If it interests you, there is also an additional add-on for use of the 13 spas and wellness centres based across the Magic Pass resorts. This add-on is nearly 270 Swiss francs, so I just paid for entry whenever I used a spa. Finally, you can add on access to Crowns Montana for up to 100 days of use. This access does have a peak period exclusion, so just check the small print before you consider adding this extra. From the top of my head, that's all of the main information on the Magic Pass, but if you have any extra questions, make sure you drop them below. Now, let's get straight into the video and my biggest Magic Pass surprises. So for me, Sass Almagal was perhaps my biggest surprise on the Magic Pass. I headed to the Sass Valley, really excited to visit Sass Fay. In fact, Sass Fay was one of the main reasons I opted to buy the Magic Pass in the first place. But I left the Sass Valley being really impressed with Sass Almagal and underwhelmed by Sass Fay. Almagal had pristine groomed terrain and I loved it for its 700 meter descent from the highest point to the base via some beautiful red runs. The views from Almagau are everything you would expect from a Swiss ski resort with the traditional looking village at the base. I enjoyed Almagau for being a quiet escape from the much busier Sass Fay. Another really surprising resort for me was Verkerin. I visited Verkerin when in the Val de Anivier and I absolutely loved it. Verkerin is small with just 35 kilometers a piece but it also has a thousand meters of vertical drop. The piece in Verkerin was super cruisy, which I love, and they've recently made investments in their lift, meaning the infrastructure there was good for a smaller resort. In this section, I'll be deciding on my favorite combined ski area. To be in contention for this, the resorts need to be combined by either lifts or free transport. That means the following resorts could have won. Now the combined resorts of Lacine, Les Moss and La La Charette, Diableray, Villars and Grion, or Grements and Zinal. A combination of epic terrain, modern lifts and quality snow put Grements Zinal clear. Personally, I would base myself in Grements as it has direct access to both ski areas and some of the best terrain on the Magic Pass. Grements Zinal was amazing for off-piste with dedicated free ride areas and short hikes from most lifts. Grements Zinal has 115 kilometers of piece, which is more than enough to keep most entertained and both resorts have small terrain parks. 
The village of Grements has more charm than Zinal, but Zinal does have access to the spa if you do want to unwind following a day on the slopes. I can see Grement Zinal being great for all abilities, so whether you're looking for learner slopes or epic steeps, definitely consider these resorts. I'd like to give an honourable mention to Laysin, Les Mos and La Lacherette. These three resorts are combined and offer something a little bit different, so it makes sense for them to be combined together in the same area. Laysan has modern lifts and one of the best terrain parks on the Magic Pass. It's 100 kilometers of piece, are popular, so the quieter Les Charette has quiet slopes which appeal if you want to stay away from the crowds, and Les Moss has a good combination of both. Wide open piece, border cross tracks, and a small freestyle area. With 52 ski resorts to choose from, it is actually pretty hard to plan where to go using the Magic Pass. I was fortunate to have the time to visit quite a few of the resorts on the pass, but if you don't have the time to take risks, then these are five resorts that I would put at the top of your list. The best ski resort on the Magic Pass for views is hands down Glacier 3000. The peak walk is absolutely spectacular and looks out on a number of Europe's most famous mountains. I will give an honourable mention to Sass Fay, where the revolving restaurant on the glacier also has some epic views. Okay, so next up is the Best Terrain Park Award. Now this is tough because both Glacier and 3000 and Sass Fay didn't have their terrain parks open at my time of visit, which sucked. They're both really well known for having a decent setup, but I can only judge from what I saw. That means for me, the best terrain park has to go to Laysan as it had the best variation. Laysan had everything from big jumps to small entry level stuff, so I'm going to have to vote for that. The best small ski resort. This award goes to a resort that stole my heart, its lack of amenities kept the crowds away, and its quiet slopes were fantastic for just cruising. The best small resort goes to Le Charette. One of the best things about Le Charette is if you wanted modern, it was only 10 minutes up the road to Le Son, but Le Charette had it all for me. Quiet slopes away from the crowds, a beautiful ski area, there's nothing more that I wanted. Next up is best for free ride. Now for me, that means a resort that not only had epic terrain inbounds, but it also had something to offer in terms of off-piste. There is only one winner of this award for me, and it goes to the combined resort of Grements Zinal. Grements Zinal gave me some of my best memories on the trip with nice tree runs, untouched pow, and the Zinal free ride zone where I was able to tour and get away from the crowds. Finally, we are left with the best overall resort. Now for me, my criteria to make this decision was what resort would I want to live at? I think on reflection, if I was going to base myself in one resort for a whole winter, it would be Les Diablerets. Now for me, Diablerets wasn't the best at anything, but it was great for lots of things. Firstly, let's look at its location. Diablerets meant that you were a short drive from Glacier 3000 or a short ski from both Villars and Grion. When you add that, to Les Son and its combined resorts, which are also nearby, the location offer lots of terrain within a short area. Secondly, the local Diablerie area has lots of cruisy blues. Most of the time, that's exactly where I want to be, and I was really happy just riding around the resort. Diablerie has a terrain park. For freestyle and my ability, the park in Diablerie was great. A couple of kickers and boxes was all I needed. When you add to that the simple access to the terrain park in Villars and the larger one at Glacier 3000, then Diablerie definitely is a decent stop for those who are really interested in riding the park. Finally, the combined ski area in Diablerie means you're unlikely to get bored riding around the same slopes continuously. All in all, I think basing myself in Diablerie was great and I'd definitely stay there again. Okay, so that's it, my thoughts on the Magic Pass. I'd love to hear from you about your opinions on the Magic Pass or any of the resorts I've visited. Have I missed out an epic resort? Have I given Sass Fay a hard time? Let me know. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate your support and I'll see you soon with another video.